Do calm down, my dear, Mrs. Cranky said from the other end of the table, and stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. Mr. Cranky leapt up from his chair. Never mind about the cornflakes, he cried. Come on, George, let's get going. When the new mixture is ready, we'll test it out on an old hen, just to make absolutely sure we've got it right. And after that, we'll shout hooray and build a giant factory! <laughs> but I can't possibly remember all the hundreds of things I put into the saucepan to make the medicine, said George. Of course you can, my dear boy, cried Mr. Cranky. I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. You'll get it in the end. You see if you don't. Now then. What was the very first thing you put in? Well, I went up to the bathroom first, George said. I used a lot of things in the bathroom and on Mummy's dressing table. Come on then, cried Mr. Cranky. Up we go, to the bathroom. And when they got there, they found a whole lot of empty tubes and empty aerosols and empty bottles. Oh, that's great, said Mr. Cranky. That tells us exactly what we need. If anything's empty, it means you used it. So Mr. Cranky started making a list of everything that was in the bathroom. And then they went on to Mrs. Cranky's dressing table. A box of powder, said Mr. Cranky, writing it down. Helga's hair set, flowers of turnips, perfume. Terrific! This is going to be easy! Where did you go next? Um, to the laundry room, George said. But are you sure you haven't missed out anything up here, Dad? Well, that's up to you, my boy, said Mr. Cranky. Have I? Uh, I don't think so, said George. Right. Down in the laundry room, Mr. Cranky wrote down the names of all the bottles and the cans. My goodness me! What a mass of stuff you need, he cried. No wonder you did magic things. Is that the lot? No, Dad, it's not, said George. And he led his father down to the shed. And there, on the table, were the five big, empty bottles of animal medicines. Right. Anything else? asked Mr. Cranky. And George scratched his head and thought and thought. But he couldn't remember having put anything else in. So, Mr. Killy Cranky leapt into his car and drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans and everything on his list. And then he went to the vet and got a fresh supply of all the animal medicines George had used. Soon... All the things that Mr. Cranky had bought were lined up on the kitchen table. Now, show me how you did it, George, he said. Come along, show me exactly how you mixed them all together. One by one, George poured and squeezed the things into the saucepan. Keep at it, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky, dancing round the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch you work. With everything so close at hand, the whole job didn't take George more than ten minutes. But when it was all done, the saucepan didn't somehow seem to be quite as full as it had been the first time. Now what did you do? cried Mr. Cranky. Did you stir it? I, I boiled it, George said, but not for long, and I stirred it as well. So Mr. Cranky lit the gas under the saucepan, and George stirred the mixture with the same long wooden spoon he'd used before. Yes. It's not brown enough, George said. Wait a minute, I know what I've forgotten. What? cried Mr. Cranky. Tell me, quick, because if we've forgotten even one tiny thing, then it won't work. At least, not in the same way. A quart of brown gloss paint, George said. That's what I've forgotten. Mr. Killy Cranky shot out of the house and into his car like a rocket. He sped down to the village and he bought the paint and he rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and <laughs> he handed it to George. George poured the paint into the saucepan. Aha! That's better, George said. That's much more like the right colour. It's boiling, cried Mr. Cranky. It's boiling and bubbling, George. Is it ready yet? It's ready, George said. At least, I hope it is. Right! shouted Mr. Cranky, hopping about. Let's test it! Let's give some to a chicken!
Mrs. Cranky wasn't very keen to leave her mother sticking up through a roof for the rest of her life. So in the end, two men came with a crane and lifted Grandma out. George's medicine hadn't made her any less grumpy or bad-tempered, but it had made her very tall. And the only place for her to sleep was in the hay barn with the mice and rats. In the meantime, George and his father had used up all the medicine making gigantic animals. They gave it to the pig, the bullocks, the sheep, the pony, and the nanny goat. The marvellous medicine was so fantastic that George and his father went straight back indoors to make some more. The new mixture looked...